Joining us today, ladies and gentlemen, we have Jamaican reggae artist, Dane Ray. Dane is steadily gaining international recognition as an accomplished music producer and super vocalist. Yet, this rising star almost never made it in the business. After completing high school, Dane's rare love of music led him to study at the Edna Mandy School of Music. While his family recognizes exceptional talent, they did not see music as a lucrative career for him. In an act of defiance, as lots of young people, Dane Ray ran away from home at the age of 17 and locked himself away to master his art. Surviving on the streets of Kingston City, he experienced some of the most traumatic time in his young life, but he stuck to it. Welcome, Dane Ray. Dane. Thanks for having me, sir. How are you, buddy? Great. How was the UK? Love it. You're not getting used to the weather. Yeah, getting used to the weather. Yeah. What about the politics? I haven't got into that. I know I'm all about music and so <laughs> much. Into the politics thing. Well, you know, you know. Before you go any further, there's a politician named Jeremy Corbyn. He's going around with all the young guys and with uh, Stormzy and all these rappers and everything like that, you know. He's capitalizing on the youths, you know. Yeah. But we won't go into that because we're talking about Dane Ray, you know. Definitely. Um, Dane, listen, welcome to the UK, as I said, again. Exactly. And um, so tell me, first thing I want to ask you is this. Um, you uh, run away as a little boy to yeah. follow your dream. Yeah. I mean, many people these days want to follow their dream. Yeah. Tell us about Dane Ray and what actually inspired you to do that? Um, music is something inborn. My father is a drummer. My great-grandfather is a drummer as well. Famous drummer by the name of Monkey Man. Okay. But it's, it's something that I've always loved and appreciated. What's that? Monkey Man, yeah? Monkey Man. Yeah. yeah. And I went to university and study and learned the instrument, did some vocals, and I got real good people always encouraged me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I started to making beats and producing. I got a number one in Trinidad with Charlie Black's song is Wine Up. And oh, you mean the, the first number one team? Yeah, that was in Trinidad at a very young age. So that really had, um, with all the experience and the achievement, I was really enthused and to pursue my career the way I wanted, I had yeah. to go into Big Apple, I had to be in the city. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I went to Kingston and started my own record label and started to work with other artists and, you know what I mean, pushing forward. So when you say you went to Kingston, so where are you from? Where are you? I'm from Ochoa. You're from Ochoa? Yeah. You know where I'm from? Where well, now? Because I watch you, man. <laughs> Bless you, man. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I mean, we can forget about the interview and just talk about watching you know? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm from Ochoa. I went to um, Ochoa's primary and uh, I went to um, York Castle High School. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm one of the, you know, my guys, I'm from Ochoa watching. I'm like one of the original Ochoa man. I'm mean, a real live Ochoa man. I appear fraud Ochoa. Yeah, <laughs> you know, man, Ochi, you know? But that's awesome. So they, because Ochoa is um, very renowned for um, Jack Ruby Music Avenue. Yeah. Uh, I think recently. They, 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 they changed to the name of the street, James Avenue, yeah. to Jack Ruby Avenue. You know? okay. and, and it's a big festival. It just fast as well. Yeah. So. I, I remember those days because growing up in Ochoa, and, 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 and it's interesting, and, and I'll come to this in, in very quickly. Growing up in Ochoa's and growing up those years back in Jamaica, which isn't just a few years back, because I'm not much older than you. I'm just about two years older than you. <laughs> <laughs> I can see. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was really nice because I remember one time going to Fat Jaw Operator. Fat Jaw was one of the selectors for Jack Ruby. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was into rapping and all those sort of things. And uh, Fat Jaw created a music for us. But one of the things I must say is that they actually looked out for young people. The, those guys down there, you know, parents might not send you to dance, but Jack Ruby and all of those guys and the original Ochi Man. Now, what is it like now in Jamaica, like with young persons um, wanting to get into the business? And um, I don't know, what is it like? Well, the business has become more competitive because mm. um, <coughs> producers want to work with top names, you know what I mean? Yes. But they don't have the time for nurture, yes. talent, and invest in young talent. So. Mm. It's, it's very difficult. As a, as a young artist, it, there's a lot of ways to get in the industry. Yeah. Now, most of the artists nowadays are trying to do it the controversial way. It's right. not like talent. There's not a, a lot of artists what as the talent right now are. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're not getting the, the recognition that they need. 
as oh. a talented artist, yeah. they're forced to do controversial stuff or stuff that give them instant publicity. Now, when it's viral. Yeah, when, when you mentioned that there now, with the advent of social media, yeah. um, likes of Bob Marley, um, Peter Touch, Jacob Miller Killer, and all these different guys, they rose to stardom based on their music. Yeah. Now, you mentioned about controversial, so um, you've got things like equal rights, you've got things like um, bring it to me, what, what the owner? Um, bring it to the owner. It's a, I heard it's a, it's a viral video, you know, yeah. with nudity, of course. Right. So, therefore, are you talking that is a sort of full confrontation of. Artists thing? are forced yeah. to do that because they're not getting the recognition for the, the raw talent, you know what I mean? They yeah. do a video, just spend a, a, a nice little change or a budget and get a nice video. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to reach a level where you want it to be if you're not doing something controversial. Right, right. But there is. There is different instances where you might be lucky, you know what I mean? But it, the, the average artist intend to do something controversial. How so do you, okay, uh, you are not just a singer. Yeah. I mean, you do, what I can see, you do different things. Produce, Produce. write, you know what I mean? I publish music as well. Mm. In, so by doing that, how do you see yourself then breaking away from that mold of just being controversial, but the raw talent? coming through and making its way? I am different from the rest of artists because I don't need a producer right. or an engineer around, you mm. know what I mean, to, to publish music. I can build the rhythm, I can write the song, I can get in the, in the voicing box and record the song, harmonize it, everything, yes. you know what I mean? So that put me in a different category from the rest of dancehall yeah. artists. And doing that, a lot of artists know as well and come mm. to me to write, to build the beats, or, you know what I mean, yeah. to publish music for them. So that, there's a lot of avenues or way that I can express my talent. So who are some of the artists then? Um, I can see you got um, Macadam. What are some of the other art artists that I've you're creating with, for? I've worked with um, Sizzler, Egyptian, Sizzler. Elephant mm -hmm. Man, mm -hmm. Movado, Popcorn, Alkaline, Charlie Blacks. Um, bounty, enough artists. There's so, so many to mention. So you're one of the, um, what should I say, the unsung hero then? Yeah. You're in the background there getting things Back going. Back at home, they call me the super producer. Super producer, <laughs> right. Yeah. So therefore, people normally see the person on the front line doing the thing, the beat. I mean, not, not, not doing the beat, but on the front line. But Performing be and presenting. But before that, be I mean, before that can achieve, yeah. you are the person like an engine. Yeah. Right. Definitely. So is it that now that you want to be on the front line then? It's not that I want to be, no. I've always been pursuing my career, I've always been writing and singing. Yeah. However, in doing that, artists realize, other <coughs> artists realize my talent and they collaborate with mm. me. And it was successful at the time, mm. so that, that's where I get more business. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's where I get, I, I get um, the most publicity for our, uh, that's where I'm more popular. Yeah. Because I've got a number one in Trinidad, and we've got a number one in um, Chile as well. Okay. Okay. You know, I'm currently which, which is the number one? What, what, what's um, the number? All natural. All natural. Yeah, yeah. With a big group by the name of Pose Latina. Yeah. You know, they're one of the biggest group in South America. Okay. The song is actually. So you collaborate with yeah. Them. Yeah. Mm. The song is actually on a lot of Spotify charts in many countries like Colombia, Argentina, Chile, and Peru. Yes. You know and. I've done a next song with DJ Mays named Wine Nicky Wine. Wine Nicky Wine, yeah. It's, now, okay. it's currently number six in Netherlands on the Spotify viral chart. So. But let's, look at, let's have a couple look at a couple of these tunes. Yeah, Then, I think you mentioned it before, but just to clarify, what was the first thing you wrote or produced, the first music, not thing, what? Um, wine Up. Is it the Wine Up one? Yeah, then? by Charlie Blacks, and it was like number one in Trinidad for yeah. like three years. Yeah. You know, and the follow-up was Jamaica, and every day it was number one in Jamaica yeah. for like eight months. Okay, okay. That was actually Charlie Blacks' um, first number one in okay. Jamaica. So you have done some collaboration with Charlie Black then? Yeah, I've done a lot of um, production for him and I was also on the management team. Okay, okay. Yeah. 
Uh, but now um, I'm doing a lot of work with other artists because mm. I'm putting out an album now with, um, by the name of Danza. Yeah. It means dancing or dance all in Spanish. It's interesting what you're saying. Um, if you had followed with your parents mm. and be a nice boy yeah. <laughs> and stayed home, yeah. do you think you would have achieved what you've achieved thus far? No, I'm not saying it is, is impossible, but yeah. being in the city and learning and being around other artists, mm. I think it molded me into the person that I am today. No, I'm, I'm very careful what I say, what I said right there, because what I try to attract young people as well. So yeah. it's not like saying <laughs> parents, I'm not saying your child should run away for them to be yeah. successful. Yeah. But, but how would you actually um, encourage like young people who is at that particular point, have a dream? Just, and wanting to break through, you know. It's just believing in your talent, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. no one will take your craft or no one will believe in your dream as much as you do. Right. So it's all about um, pursuing your dream. Mm -hmm. I, did a, I, did, I have a series called Don't Go With The Flow and I give this inspirational talk. My last one was believe in yourself first. I guess that's what you're saying. Believe in yourself. Do you know there are times, there are challenges, challenges in your life whereby there's no one around, no one to assist you, no one to help. Yeah, You've got to yourself, believe in yourself yes, first. Yes. Now tell us now, um, what would you say that you like most about, the, this is your profession, this is where you, as we say yeah. in Jamaica, this is how you eat a food, you know? you know? What would you say you like about the profession and what do you like least in this particular field now, this competitive field? What I like the most about um, this industry or my profession is that you're privileged to travel the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you're dictating to people that don't even speak your language. Yes. So you can just imagine the feedback or the energy is there, the vibe is there, and the love is there most mm -hmm. importantly. You know what I mean? So that is one of the greatest feelings I've experienced. You know yeah. what I mean? I've been to Chile, I've been to Panama, I've been to Costa Rica, mm -hmm. um, Trinidad, Canada. And it's always a great feeling. feeling and yeah. every every demography or continent or state mm -hmm. or country that you go, it's always different because you're trying to relate to people that yes. are from a different um, influence. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and what would you say is the least thing that you like about this particular, or the challenges, whatever? The challenges, is, it's always a challenge in making it to the top, getting mm -hmm. your music out there in general. You know what I mean? Back in Jamaica, it's very competitive. Yeah. Especially um, if you're a country artist, it is, it is even more competitive. But country has more people in Jamaica than town. So how come, why, why, why don't we just make the country people <laughs> of the country artists? Yeah. Because not only in Jamaica, you yeah. find that art, all the artists have a tendency to go to the city. city yeah, yeah. Where you can get the big break, get on the TV station, the best um, radio mm -hmm. stations and link with, with the right publicists and the PRs and getting in the circle. Well, I, I hope and I trust, ladies and gentlemen, that by Dane Ray being in the UK and in London, in the city, and being on the Silburn show, that's with a massive breakthrough, isn't it? Definitely. Awesome. Definitely. Now, tell me now, um, Frankie Paul, a couple of days ago, um, well, that last night, actually, by the time very I finished, sad, very um, sad. passed away. Um, and, you know, rest in peace and um, condolences to his family and the music fraternity like yourself. Definitely. When you heard, as an artist, in that... It was, you know, mm. devastating because Frankie Paul is a legend. Yes. You know, growing up, I can always remember the song, Sarah. Yeah. Um, you know the score. Yeah. Pass a, um, Kushum, Kushum Peng. Pass a Kushum <laughs> you know? Peng. That's a big, 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 yeah. big, big song. Even if you know Jamaica, you know Pass the yeah. Kushum Peng, you know what I mean? Well, you know, my favourite. Yeah. My favourite is Alicia. Alicia. Come, you know, I think I think I have a, a niece and her name is Aisha. We always tease her all the yeah. way. Remember <laughs> girl in the neighborhood? She named Alicia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, if you know they can sing along, all she feet pan is pure French fry and hamburger. <laughs> and they say, she have a hungry belly, she have a hungry. So, nice, you know, no, no, I think Frankie Paul, you know, I was listening to the music and, and I must say, instead of feeling a bit remorseful, it was just listening to the music and it really was just picking you up like, you know. And Definitely. I think that's one of the things about his music. It's very soothing, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, um, and we're going to do a tribute at some point later. Anyway, so ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break with Dane Ray and I'll come back to you where we'll speak to him more about his plans for the future and also his perspective on young people and as a role model, whether he sees himself as a role model or not. Thank you. 
Well, it's glad you said that because there are persons who are sometimes parachute or propelled in are deemed to be as role models yeah. and uh, parents wouldn't really be happy for their children to follow such persons but by virtue of their um, popularity um, some of them don't accept it or say I'm not a role model I'm just living my life you know what I mean yeah. but you see yourself as a role model for young people to yeah, inspire definitely. them. Well you're <clears throat> gonna have good and bad role mm. models from 1960s, from 18, when it comes straight up to now, we're going to have good and bad role mm. models. Tribute to Frankie Paul. Jamaica reggae artist Frankie Paul died at the University Hospital of West Indies on the 19th of May 2017. Paul was born in 1965. He was 52 years old. According to his sister, he died shortly after 10 p.m. He had been suffering from kidney problem and was on a dialysis two days per week. We understand he had been admitted to the hospital since April. Paul, who had moved to the African nation, the Gambia, in 1994, was a major dancehall reggae artist of the 1980s and the 1990s with hits like Worries in the Dance, Worries There, you know, Pass the Cushion Pen, Pass It Over, and Tidal Wave, Casanova, and Sarah. But my personal favorite was Alicia, and I've got to sing this one. There's a girl in the neighborhood. She named Alicia. All she peep on is pure French fry and hamburger. And as we all know, we all say she got a hungry belly. But anyhow, Frankie Paul, born in Jamaica in 1965, was real name was Paul Blake. Was blind from birth and spent his early life at the Salvation Army School for the Blind. While there, he met American R&B singer Stevie Wonder, who was in Kingston for a show at the National Stadium in the 1970s. Wonder heard him to become a professional singer. Like Wonder, Paul also played a number of instruments including the keyboard. Many dubbed him the Jamaican Steve Wonder. Frankie Paul will be sadly missed and behalf of a team at Silburn TV and the Silburn Show. Our condolences to his families and friends and the music fraternity in Jamaica and the rest of the world. And may he rest in peace. The one your name top Jackie Beans and okra steam down with the yaki The mount of Irish mash burn up for your tacky The one them for you know Dean Ray Same way I represent for Silburn TV you Don't know like and promote support The TV station you you don't know the baddest the baddest The one your name top Jackie Boom Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the Silver and Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel.